بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم دا کورس ٹائٹل از نائنٹین سینچری انگلش ناول دس لیکچر از اباؤٹ فرسٹ ٹوینٹی چیپٹرز آف دا میئر آف کیسٹر برج دا لائف اینڈ ڈیتھ آف اے مین آف کریکٹر اے ویری فیمس ناول آف تھامس ہاری ہو از نون ایز اے فلاسفر بائی نیچر دس بک اوپنس ود دا انٹروڈکشن آف three characters Michael Henchard his wife Susan Henchard and their young daughter Elizabeth Jean The setting of the opening scene is southwestern England in the 1820s Michael Henchard is a hay trusser and they all are heading towards Wedden Priors in Upper Wessex The hair trusser is looking for work and on his way he is very sad he is very depressed because he learns he comes to know from a person that no jobs are available and when they arrived at Waden Priors they came to know about a celebration that at this day Wedden Friars is celebrating a fair though they were very tired and the body language of this couple gives the idea that they are not in a very happy relationship still they entered in the tent and dear Michael Hanchard noticed that a formative woman is generously lacing the mixture with rum and when he came to know about this when he observed this he signaled her to do so for him as well after drinking Michael Hanchard lost his senses he became argumentative and he started talking about his own unhappy married life in his disturbed and emotional unstable situation he put his own wife and daughter on auction he said that he wanted to sell his wife and daughter it was very strange and miserable situation for susan hanchard as well but this was not a joke a man richard newson who was a sailor bought the mother and child in 5 guineas in this chapter the very first chapter of the book readers realize readers realize the unique storytelling of thomas hardy the description which thomas hardy gave for describing the countryside the barrenness the sadness the bleakness it all relates with the barren relationship of the couple one important thing is that thomas hardy put another imagery in the same chapter that is of animals here two animals were rubbing their here the horses were rubbing their necks with e- necks with each other so hardy put animals in comparison with humans as the rubbing necks symbolize the union and love whereas the humans they symbolize the separation so here thomas hardy also compare hanchard's mentality as he put his wife on auction like an animal so the chapter ends where michael hanchard sold his wife and daughter a hair dresser entered in a town sold his wife and daughter in an in a unstable drunken state 
then in the chapter 2 when the next morning michael hanchard came back to his senses he recalled the incidents of previous evening and he noticed two things one is the wedding ring and other five guineas in his breast pocket the wedding ring uh, was basically given by susan when she was leaving with richard newson a man who purchased him he threw the wedding ring on the face of michael henshot and the amount the bank notes in his best breast pocket is something which he got after doing that misdeed michael henshot was very disturbed and he was very embarrassed in that situation he pledged not to drink for 21 years he tried his level best not best but he tried to know about the whereabouts of his missing daughter and wife but his all efforts went in vain one important thing is that michael henshot after realizing that he is unable to find his wife and daughter he finally decided to move towards another place and he moved towards castor bridge a very rural part of wexus and michael henshot before leaving informed formative women that where he is going so this chapter is just like a prelude that is in com- that is very common in greek tragedy this chapter also tells us about the nature and temperament of michael henchard the central character of the novel and these two chapters are uh, depict many upcoming things of the novel so we can say that here thomas hardy foreshadows many upcoming events and as well as about the personalities of main character so michael henchard left for castor bridge and his wife and daughter are are now not with him he sold them the chap- the chapter 3 tells us that 18 years have passed and after 18 years obviously 18 years are long period but after this time on the same road a mother and daughter traverse on the same road and they and these two women are no other than susan and elizabeth jane here the important thing is that susan has, susan is now a recently widowed because the sailor who purchased her he lost his life at sea as 18 years have passed so obviously susan is now old and it and weak whereas his young whereas the daughter elizabeth jane she is now a young lady both women are looking for michael hanshot and uh, here after 18 years susan met the same women the formative women obviously she is also aged now when uh, susan questioned her the old women remembered and she told her that hanchard planned to go to castor bridge obviously both mother and daughter decided to go there uh the important thing is that now widowed susan is financially weak and obviously she is looking for hanchard because she needs shelter and money and in this chapter the manners of elizabeth jane are very modest this shows that she has been raised in a very 
good and proper way. Now, chapter 14, in a flashback, uh, the readers learn about the past of Susan, Hanche, Susan and her life with Newson, a sailor, a man who purchased her. Here, uh, in the first chapter, we noticed the thing that Susan is a weak lady. But when she uh, was with Richard Newson, First, for some time they lived in Canada and after that they returned to England. But when they were in Canada, Susan discovered this thing that the marriage between that the marriage of Newson and Susan, it's not legal. And being a virtuous woman, she was very guilty on this thing. After one year, Richard Newson lost his life at sea. So, finally, this news worked as a release for Susan. But when she observed her financial situation and she also thought about the da daughter's future, so she decided to go in search of ancient. But when she reached Castor Bridge, they came to know, the mother and daughter, they both came to know about bad wheat and shortage of bread. But, Alice, but, they were uh, very surprised and disturbed as well because everything was new for them time time has changed many things and uh, one important thing is that this chapter tells us that susan has not revealed anything she has not disclosed his past in front of his daughter her daughter is unaware about what had happened 18 years ago Now, uh, this chapter also tells us about Henshaw and his role in the town, which we can easily relate with chapter 5. But before moving towards chapter 5, here one thing that needs our attention is the device used by Thomas Hardy, a literary device that is dramatic irony. It means in which the readers are aware of the situation, but the characters are not aware, they are unaware. The example is of Elizabeth Jane because she is unaware of the past of her own mother, whereas readers know that about the past of Susan Hanshaw. This chapter also uh, gives a detailed description of rustic life. It is usually said that Thomas Hardy is a master of portraying rural life. And Hardy in his book presented a beautiful and detailed picture of rural life and he emphasized on the pastoral people that how they were unaware from the, from the air of modernism. Chapter number five, let's relate it with chapter number four that Henshaw and his role in the town. So here in this chapter, both mother and daughter, they reach to the king's arm where a, pub, uh, where a public dinner is being hosted by the mayor of Casterbridge. Interestingly, the mayor of Casterbridge is no other than Michael Henshaw. And obviously now he is a most powerful man in the town. This chapter also tells us that uh, Michael Henshaw is still keeping his promise. He, uh, he sips water instead of wine. Uh, he was 
uh, occasionally he was sipping from water glass and it was very shocking and surprising for susan in this uh, uh, dinner that was hosted by mayor a man asked about bad bread that what's the cause of bad wheat and michael henchard said that he is dealing with a large business so he is unable to manage everything that's why he is looking for manager and he has advertised this post here this chapter tells us foreshadows us again that a new character is coming obviously someone will apply for the post of manager this chapter also uh, shows the element of suspense as well now chapter number 6 here a good looking scotsman a stranger joined the crowd obviously uh, it was the time of dinner a stranger joined the crowd and when he came to know about the post of manager con manager he sent a note to mayor here susan and elizabeth jane are also present but michael hanshet is unaware that his past is also standing within his present and obviously his future as well but elizabeth jane when he saw the good looking scotsman she liked him and his northern ways and she came to know that this man is going to stay in a three mariners inn that is a lodging and she insisted her mother that they will also stay there this chapter as the in this chapter as the plot unfolds we noticed that all the main characters are going to meet in a one place before uh, moving towards chapter number 7 let's have a quick idea of elizabeth jane she is unaware about the past she in a first uh, glance she get attracted towards the stranger and this chapter also tells us that unlike her mother she is self assertive and a strong lady now chapter number 7 in this chapter when they reach to the three mariners inn they realized the mother and daughter they both realized that this lodging is expensive place they cannot afford this so that's why elizabeth jane decided to work as a barmaid to cover some of the expenses and interestingly the landlady agreed to the proposal and she sent elizabeth jane to the far freeze room with his supper when elizabeth jane came back she noticed her mother is trying to listen the conversation between farfree and hanshet farfree gave him the note that's why hanshet came to meet him uh, and here farfree talked hanshet and informed him about a few in, uh, innovative processes that can be used for restoring bad feet but important thing is that farfree donald farfree the scottish man he didn't apply for that manager post he just came to know about the bad wheat and he just shared up fruitful information with the mayor in this chapter thomas hardy juxtaposed 
द स्कॉटिश मैन अ न्यू करेक्टर एंड द मेयर ऑफ कैस्टर ब्रेज ऑब्वियसली दे बोथ आर नॉट ओनली फिजिकली डिफरेंट इन देयर स्ट्रक्चर फार फ्री इज अ मैन ऑफ साइंस अ मैन ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी वेयर एज हैंचर्ड इज अ मैन हु रियलाइज ऑन ट्रेडिशनल एंड ओल्ड वेज now chapter number 8 it's about the popularity of farfrey not only through his good nature but his but through his maladies as well he entertained the crowd by singing a very sentimental song about longing for home and uh, in this chapter Elizabeth Jane felt herself getting more attracted towards this stranger. In this chapter Hanchard's past, present and future are under one roof. Because when he left for house in his on his way he decided that he will offer more and more good options because Farfrey is really a good and practical man he really impressed hanchard so the past of hanchard is susan his present is bad wheat which he wants to get restored with the help of farfrey and future is obviously elizabeth jane and susan uh chapter number 9 tells us about another important thing that is the attitude of michael henchard though time has passed a hate rosser is now a mayor but still he is a bit emotional and a man who relies on his impulses wealthy henchard he talked far free initially far free was reluctant to to join but later his plans of america were not were vague and he finally accepted the offer given by michael henchard so another story is running parallel in this plot that is of henchard's past susan gave a note to elizabeth jane and asked her to give this note to michael henchard so that he came to know about their arrival in casterbridge and this chapter also tells us about the bond between henchard and farfrey moving forwards moving forward in chapter number 10 two things two interesting things uh meet with michael henchard the first interesting character or episode is of joshua jock he was basically a candidate for the post of manager and uh, during when when he came and in that inter the scene for an interview in which michael hanchard misbehaved job he misbehaved with job and he unintentionally made his made him his enemy then he met with elizabeth jane newson and it was very shocking and surprising for henchard that susan is alive and newson has lost his life and uh, in this chapter michael henchard finally decided to meet susan but the note which he gave to elizabeth jane 
Along with that, he enclosed five guineas. It's very interesting and ironic as well that the same amount was given by Richard Newson when he when Michael Henchard sold his wife and daughter. So he paid the same amount. An important thing is that Michael Henchett is a mayor now. So he has a reputation in the society. So they decided to meet at the ring, a place that is a bit, uh, that is away from the town. Here, Michael Henchett was ashamed on his past misdeeds and he said that being a mayor now, they will take things in a very organized way. First, mother and daughter will, buy, will live in a cottage in the Castor Bridge. After that, Michael Henshard will, eventually he will marry Susan. And the young woman, Elizabeth Jane, will be known as the stepdaughter of the mayor. Again, Michael Henchard became to know that Elizabeth Jane is unaware from any is unaware from anything of the past. In this chapter, Michael Henchard also apologized Susan on his past act, and he wanted to and he really wanted to repay for his past misdeeds. That's why he wanted to add Susan and Elizabeth Jane in his future. He considered it as an opportunity to improve his past. When Hanshad returned in the chapter 12, uh, he shared his all secrets with Farfri. One important thing that Farfri's interest in his work this again shows the difference between the character of difference between the character of Hanshard and Farfrey. Farfrey deals things in an organized way, whereas all the records of Hanshard are disorganized, are not properly arranged. Here, Hanshard shared his big secrets of the past with Farfrey and Farfrey advised him to tell Elizabeth Jane everything. But obviously Michael Henshard was reluctant in doing so. In this chapter, Michael Henshard shared another secret with Farfrey that in the, in, the, in, the, in the years when he was alone, he thought that Susan has died. That's why she in, got involved in another woman. But now she, but now he really wanted to repay for his past acts. Henshard requested Farfrey to write the lady in Jersey to explain the situation, and he also planned to send her money. So have you noticed that in the previous chapters? He again tried to pay Susan and here he is trying to pay another woman. One interesting thing is that Michael Henshard unburdened his heart in front of Farfrey and after this he was not feeling uh, light. He was uneasy after telling his personal matters and he doubtfully wonders he said that can it be that it will go so easily it here again he foreshadows the upcoming problems now moving towards chapter number 13 one important thing is that under the supervision of Farfrey things were all the business matters were going in a good direction. 
as per plan hanshed hires a cottage for susan and started visiting her regularly as per their plan they did, he proposed a marriage after a reasonable period and they got married for many people in town it was a very amazing it was a very confusing thing because for them lucy uh, 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 for them susan and mir they are not they uh, it is a mismatched couple and they called who uh, and they called susan as the ghost because she was weak aged and she was not uh, even her physical appearance was not very very attractive but here the uh, the uh, the image of ghost is basically the image of hanshard's past but things were going as per plan family and business the marriage the marriage of mayor with a ghost the ghost means susan susan is the past of michael hanshard and it also tells us the bad the misdeed which hanshard did in that fair after the marriage things were moving in a smooth way they were in a good condition when michael hanshard proposes an idea that he wants the name elizabeth jane hanshard instead of miss elizabeth jane newson but susan objected on this and another interesting observation came in front of readers that hanshard realized that there is something wrong with the hair color of elizabeth jane he said that uh, it is lighter than he remembered but it was not it but this thing remained unnoticed one uh, another interesting episode of this chapter is an anonymous note someone sent a note to farfri and the same note to elizabeth jane in which the writer wanted to meet them at a granary at dorover hill when they both when both of them reached there they there was they both were very surprised because they both of them disowned responsibility of writing this note but this small coincidental meeting gave them a chance to know about each other chapter number 15 in this chapter elizabeth jane due to her position as a step daughter of mayor she became the town's beauty and farfrey was also attracted towards her loveliness this chapter uh in this chapter a small a minor dispute between michael and hanshard changed things a lot abel witter he was late on his work and michael hanshard was very irritated and that's why he went his home and asked him to come to work without his breeches on and it's his punishment but farfrey disliked this and he said that abel whittle must wear his breeches in this clash farfrey won but a small minor thing grew the seeds of jealousy and bitterness though somehow they renewed their friendship but this chapter caused cracks in their strong bond of mayor and manager here again 
author puts the two characters in comparison with each other michael hanchard a man of traditions a short tempered man a man who relies on impulses whereas mike Fa donald farfree young man an example of modernism and as well as he is a man who thinks from his heart not from his mind this chapter tells us about hanchard versus farfree it uh, in actual and uh, there was a public celebration day and both hanchard and farfree arranged entertainment and arranged a party for public hanchard organized an outdoor party whereas farfree keeping weather condition in consideration he organized things inside as nature is very cruel and thomas hardy's novel the role of nature is always very evident nature plays a very special role in hardy's almost all novels rain ruined hanchard's arrangement and everyone enjoyed farfree's party this again made hanchard jealous and people even started teasing him that farfree has outdated the mayor these things were beyond the endurance of hanchard and he decided that he uh, he freed donald farfree from the post of manager again another thing he acts first and then think about it it was a wrong decision by hans benchard out of his again in his emotional state he took the post of manager from farfree everyone was enjoying in this party everyone was dancing so is elizabeth jane a young lady the young lady was very confused over the behavior of his father she uh, and peep and when and when he, when he and when she inquired about this people say that maybe she is step mayor step daughter and it is improper to dance in the mixed throng so she decided to go home but in this episode in this chapter hencher disapproved elizabeth jane and farfree's relationship he asked her not to talk to farfree again and even he wrote a letter to farfree restricting him asking him not to talk to his daughter here this chapter also put the both characters in comparison who are now rivals how they are rivals they are rivals in business now as well because first uh, farfree decided to leave but then he decided to stay there and became a opponent of far uh, uh, hanchard's business chapter number 18 takes us back to susan who is not in her good health in this chapter two important things came in front of us and that is obviously from past one in this chapter one letter hanchard received a letter from lucetta and in this letter lucetta requested michael hanchard to return all the love letters she has sent him but when susan realized that she is coming to she is moving closer and closer towards her that she does several things the first thing which she did she wrote a letter and in this letter she 
sealed the she sealed it and addresses it in the words that Mr. Michael Hanchard not to be op open till Elizabeth Jane wedding day. It's in this chapter one secret from the past came in the shape of Lucetta's letter. The other thing that in this chapter another secret Susan relieved, uh, revealed before her death and that was the anonymous note writer's mystery. It was Susan who wrote that anonymous note to both uh, Elizabeth Jane and to Donald Firefree because she wanted to couple them together. She lost her life, she died and in this chapter Thomas Hardy in his unique style, in his unique way talks about the situations and surroundings through the mouth of common people. And the elements of superstitions and the provisional beliefs which she put in the mouth of minor characters, it's very unique of Thomas Hardy. It's almost in the every novel of Hardy. So this chapter ends on two secrets from the past and on the death of Susan, the death of Mayor's wife. This chapter tells us about the sadness of Michael Henchard on the death of Susan. He needed someone and he impulsively told Elizabeth Jane that he is, his, he is her father. And he makes her to write to the Castro Bridge Chronicle announcing that she would be she would call herself Elizabeth Jane Hanchard instead of Elizabeth Jane Newsom. Isn't it ironic that a man who sold his wife and daughter now saying that I will be kinder to you than he was. I will do anything if you will only look upon me as your father. He goes to his room and there he saw a letter. A letter with the restriction that not to be open till Elizabeth Jane wedding day. Michael Henchard ignored the request and opened the letter. This letter informed him that his daughter, who was in the arms of Susan when Richard Newson purchased him, she died after three months. So this Elizabeth Jane is an actual Elizabeth Jane Newson. So till this chapter, many things are cleared up. This all this the first clarity is that who, why Susan was against, why she objected when Michael Henchard first proposed this idea of the name of Elizabeth Jane. And this chapter also tells us about the gloomy picture of Henchard. Now, in chapter number 20, Elizabeth Jane was happy that his father, her father asked her for, in this chapter, my, uh, Elizabeth Jane was really happy. But when she asked for her father's love, she was very surprised because Michael Henchard started ignoring her. He started highlighting her, her weaknesses. And in one night, he changed his behavior. Even uh, he started, uh, he totally sh uh, shuts her out. Elizabeth Jane was very surprised on this changed attitude of Henchard and that's why she started visiting her mother's grave. 
here she found a new companion a woman who offered her many things which we will discuss in the coming chapters but in this chapter she found a new companion and she was overjoyed when that strange jer that stranger offers her to take uh, her into her house as a companion and marriage because here michael hencher decided that if elizabeth jane newson is going to marry far free this will help her in getting rid of elizabeth jane because now it's clear to him that elizabeth jane newson is not her, his original daughter she is the real daughter of elizabeth jane she is the real daughter of richard newson the reader uh, again we can say that dramatic dramatic irony is here because readers are aware but character is not aware about the situation and in this chapter elizabeth jane judges correctly she said that this man is hot tempered a little proud perhaps ambitious but not a bad man so so in this chapter we get the insight of henchard's personality he is short tempered he is ambitious he is proud but he is not a bad man at all till yet we have discussed first 20 chapters of the mayor of casterbridge it's the story of michael henchard who was a hate rusher in his drunken state he sold his wife and daughter and he became a mayor obviously through his will determination courage he pledged not to drink and he kept that promise he tried to repay for his past mistakes that's why he remarried susan lucetta was also the past of michael henchard he made a rival in the form of donald farfrey because he was he he was jealous due to the popularity and also the skills of michael uh, of donald farfrey so the first part of the book tells us about the rivalry between michael henchard and donald farfrey we came to know about the original identity of elizabeth jane as well and this this half first 20 chapters of the book also tells us about one interesting thing that past always haunts present and future thank you so much till yet we have discussed first 20 chapters and in the next lecture we will discuss remaining chapters of the book thank you